All right, guys, today I want to share with you some unconventional tips to help you become a better archer and, of course, a better bow hunter. Right away, as you're looking at this, you've got questions, I'm sure. Why is this guy in his basement? Why is he holding packages of frozen meat? Um, so look, if you're a bow hunter, if you're an archer, you've heard all of the conventional ways to practice and become a better shooter, right? Uh, we know, especially if we hunt out west, um, even if we're a tree stand hunter, we need to know how to shoot at steep angles. We need to know how to shoot in the wind. We need to know how our equipment uh, responds and, and reacts in those environments. And that is all very, very true. This video is not to say that those things don't matter. The point in making this video is I don't have the access to shoot beyond 10 yards every single day. Uh, where we live, we lease, I'm not allowed to shoot outside. Um, so all I have access to for daily shooting is a 10 yard shot in my basement. Okay. Um, yes, I still go to the range as often as I can. I'm very fortunate that I have a 3D course with 20 targets that rotates new targets, new setup every two weeks. So I'm there as often as I can get there. But that's not the same as shooting every single day and greasing that groove, kind of making sure that we're working on that neurological wiring, right? It's not muscle memory. Muscles do not have the capacity for memory. So. Um, anytime you hear muscle memory, what we're really talking about is neurological wiring. We're making a thing a habit. We're, we're setting that pattern, right? Um, so because I only have access to a 10 yard shot in my basement, I have noticed over time that for me to execute that shot, I'm using my top pin and a 10 yard shot is just super, super close. So what I'm training my eye to, to get used to is a really easy shot. And then when I go out and I try to shoot at 40 yards, 50 yards, the target seems really, really small. So I'm trying to find ways to make the 10 yard shot in my basement as hard as I can. I'm only shooting one arrow per day so that I can put as much pressure on that shot as possible. I wanna replicate that hunting situation. We only get one shot, right? Um, I want that one shot to be on the money, right? And, and as you've, you've probably heard the saying, we're only as good as our worst shot, we're only as good as our first shot, however you wanna think about that. So three different things that I do in my basement to make that single shot harder. The first one is I get used to shooting with cold hands. And that's why I'm holding frozen meat. Um, I just grab these out of my uh, cooler in the basement and I'll hold on to them. If you don't have frozen meat like this, you can just dunk your hands in a bucket of ice water hold them there for as long as you can stand it, get those fingers numb, get used to shooting with cold hands because a lot of times when we hunt, we're in shitty conditions and we've got to get used to that, right? So it's one of those things that we can do to make our training harder than the real thing. Um, you don't want to shoot and practice in perfect circumstances all the time. Get out there when it matters and be in adverse circumstances and not be prepared, right? Uh, so the second thing I do is I play with the lighting in my basement. Uh, I'm doing this video in the morning so that you can see the way that the light comes into our house off to my right shoulder. You can probably see some natural sunlight coming in. My target is over in a corner of the basement that's very dark. So I'm standing in the light, I'm shooting into the dark. It's gonna replicate a lot of what we see in a real life hunting situation or on a 3D course where you've got uh, a target where you're shooting in and out of the shadows, right? Um, and then the third thing that I'm gonna do is I practice holding longer and longer at full draw as the season approaches. So I may start out at holding for 30 seconds, uh, hold for a minute, hold for 90 seconds. And you can just set a timer either on a watch if you wear a watch or set it on your phone. And then when that timer goes off, then you're gonna find and acquire that target, You know, get your pins where you want them to, and then start your shot process and execute that pull, right? Um, that's gonna, again, prepare us for those times in you know, a hunting situation where, you know, even last year I held at full draw for two minutes and 56 seconds on a, a mule deer before I was able to get a shot. And had I not practiced holding for long periods of time at full draw, 
I wouldn't have been able to execute, right? So again, training and working through things in, in your training and in your practice that are gonna prepare you for less than perfect circumstances when we get into the real thing. Uh, the fourth tip that I would give you is, especially if you're shooting short distances, like what I have here at 10 yards, if, you are, if you're an elk hunter, don't shoot a full-size elk target at 10 yards and expect to be proficient at shooting a real elk at 50 or 60 yards. It's gonna look tiny. So do yourself a favor and find a really, really small target. Get a groundhog or uh, whatever the smallest 3D target is that you can find and afford or if it's just a, a block, you know, make your target really, really small. The point is get used to looking at a small target at 10 yards. Don't look at a 500 pound animal at, at 10 yards and then expect that to carry over and help you shoot the same thing at a much longer distance. So smaller target because you are shooting closer, um, have a smaller standard, uh, you know, that you will accept for your accuracy at 10 yards as well. Uh, you know, uh, when we talk MOA, as that converts to archery, we're, we're typically thinking, you know, one inch group at 10 yards, two inch group at 20, three inches, 30, you know, and so on. And so think as tight and as small of a, a, a grouping as you can possibly get, especially here at 10 yards. So I don't know how long I've been talking, but my hands are sufficiently frozen. So I'm going to grab my one arrow for the day. We're going to take a shot and we're going to see how this one goes. Uh, no pressure, right? Because I'm on film. So, uh, before we wrap this one up, make sure you click the like button down below. Uh, that really helps YouTube show you more videos like this that you want to see. Subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell if you want to get alerts every time we drop a new video. And of course, if you've got questions, comments, let us know down below. If you've got a way that you make yourself a better archer or a better bow hunter, we would love to hear your tips and strategies as well. All right, so here we go. Frozen finger shot.